we're going to get started. Uh, today's session is going to be about building surgeons because Mia has set the theme this week of founding it, becoming a founder or founding your own idea, being an entrepreneur, building something from bottoms up. So I think what I'll do is I'll talk about my journey from start to now and the different pivots that we've made, learnings, experience, and then hopefully the people listening here are able to take away a few nuggets of gold to apply to their own projects or companies that they're building or products or whatever it is. By the way, there's so many founders and builders and entrepreneurs in this VC right now. And I recognize my shortcomings and a lot of fields of entrepreneurship. So I'm happy for anyone to just unmute any point and jump in and also share as well. Anyways. So like the, the journey of being an entrepreneur always starts from an epiphany that you have or some human experience where you're seeking to solve a problem or build something that presents value for people, right? So last year in February, it was coming out of the bull market and, you know, little, little Ruthie back then, just a typical Web3 degen that was barely on Twitter, barely on Discord, didn't have much of a network or brand, asked himself, how the fuck do I build a network or brand? How can I create uh, a valuable community where me and my friends are able to actually trade together and get you know the alpha that everyone speaks of because back then ct was still forming and the culture was still forming the networks were still forming people were only starting to become like serious content creators or builders in public and so myself i worked with a couple of my friends closely to figure out what the play was and the play for us was going to be to build an alpha group that's where we started humble beginnings as an alpha group um why well we had a clear problem which is the gap with the information around what was pumping what was trading what's coming up and collabs and allow us as well because we didn't have network and we weren't in any alpha groups anyways back then so also we saw an opportunity um people were whipping up projects out of nowhere putting up a twitter page some sort of marketing ship branding and we're getting thousands of engagement just because the Web3 market at that moment was so hyped, so fucking hyped. You could put anything out and it would get so many engagements within seconds. So we decided that it was a very opportune moment to put a brand out there that represents a community for investment and trading and then form a, a team around that and see where that goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking people sending that sticker in the VC chat. That was going to be the fucking entity that we were going to want. Oh shit. That's uh this is shit that you see in your nightmares. Uh but yeah, that that was gonna be uh the the Alpha Club NFT. That was what we were called back then, Alpha Club. And there's a few early OGs here that remember Alpha Club. I see Reese, box, 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 box. By the way, Reese has been a very pivotal um builder uh from the start to now that has helped us you know, get to where we are. So all hats off to Reese and the team and everyone else there too. But yeah, as I was saying, when you're building an idea or bringing something to market, it always starts with a why or a what, an epiphany, something that you've seen or a human experience where you just want to solve for that. And that's what we did with the Alpha Group investment community. Now, after we launched that though, and this is the question that everyone has asked me as well when they're building their own community and project, which is getting your first initial community base. Back then, what we did was we had... Uh, these we, we we put out these very mysterious tweets like shh, fucking copy that was so short and we were using hard engagement farming tactics because back then not so much now uh, let, let me ask a question who here was in nft land in february march 2022 say yes yeah yeah you guys were okay let me tell you yeah yeah in february Okay, cool. You guys sending stickers making my fucking computer lag. Hopefully I sound clear though. That's all good.
Yo, yo, yo. Chris. Oh, okay, okay. I sound good. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, so um that's when we bit Alpha Club and to build our initial community base, what we did, and for everyone that was there in the market back then, February 2022, March, you would know that the way to build an audience is to engagement farm the fuck out of Web3 community Twitter. And to do that, everyone was doing you know one liner, something so mysterious, like retweet tag three first 500 to do that will qualify to join the discord community or some shit some wild shit like that which you knew was not true but that's uh that's one of the ways we catalyzed our growth at the start that would not work in today's market by the way like the community is smart uh everyone like the standards of marketing and the also complexity and the depth of marketing that it required now today to build a community is far greater than what someone needed to do back then but that's how we started building the community then um to get that social media engagement at the start to use the network effects to build the alpha club brand and get it in front of hundreds if not thousands tens of thousands of people and then building up anticipation and excitement for the launch of our discord by dropping hype posts around our value propositions that we believe were around you know like market leading alpha trading bots tools etc like it's your typical alpha group shit right then we opened up the discord community and kudos to esteemed who set the discord community up from start to finish so mia actually didn't join until later esteemed set up the discord server from start to finish with the roles permissions servers etc now mia did it later i think Esteemed um, did the initial service setup. No, uh, what? I'm pretty, pretty fucking sure Esteemed. No, no, you guys are wrong. Mia, Mia did the surgeon swine, but Alpha Club Esteemed did it. Stop, stop simping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on now. So yeah, Esteemed set up the server initially, and we onboarded community members in. Now, when we were onboarding community members in, we realized, oh shit, like our initial idea of community building was, oh, like our alpha club is hyped. The Twitter page is hyped. So people can come in and they'll probably stay around and just chill with us because it's hyped. Then we can release value and utilities later and whatever. But then we realized that ah, it takes a lot of work to actually engage, retain and build loyal community members. So myself and Esteem, after the first few days of realizing absolute zero retention at all, uh, what we did was we set up a user journey after. You need a very clear user journey if you're building a community. Um, you want a user journey that is fun. Uh, it's simple. It's clear. It's also incentivizing. It's, it's, it's incentive-led, at least for the start, because you need incentives to capture someone then values and culture and uh, utilities will convert them into a loyal holder where no longer incentives drive them to stay in the community. It's actually the, the substance of the community. So I know like incentives, the word incentives seems a bit bastardized. It turns people off. It's necessary for onboarding members and at least getting them somewhat activated. But then after a certain period of time, if you have really good uh, if you have a really good user journey set up and great community platform set up, these people will no longer be incentives driven, but value, culture, community, project driven. They'll love you for who you are. Yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> <Reese> is, <laughs> is on point there. We'll talk about that as well. And, and Reese, you can unmute when you're finished dinner uh, and talk to. And anyone else who spectated the journey as well, just feel free to jump in. But yeah, so uh, that's that's what we did. We crafted the user journey. We opened up the the Miro. We opened up uh, PowerPoint. We crafted some different user journeys and figure out what was a baseline, like MVP zero that we needed to engage and retain our members. And you write those things down. Uh, we decided that weekly events is something that we needed to do. That wasn't an original idea. We actually saw one of our favorite communities running weekly events. And we thought, okay, that's actually a great way to engage our community. So let's, let's, let's try that. Let's try that. So we did a weekly events calendar. Uh, Mia started that. And we ran that on a week-by-week -week basis. 
whenever you launch an initiative though, you always need to make sure that you have a clear idea for success and a way to measure for success. So when we did the weekly events, we said, okay, to actually see if this has value, uh, we want to see the numbers of attendees increasing over time. And we also want to see if this has a direct effect on engagement and retention in the community platform generally, right? Now we found that through the community events, we were able to do two things. One, deliver value, you know, bring experts in, they can deliver value and train members. Two, build rapport between the team and the community. And most importantly, community to community. That's, that's going to be a key point that I'll discuss later on. Because the reason that Surgeons is where, it's, where it is now is not because of team to community relationships. No, it's, it, it's because of the relationships that the community has been able to build together in genuine, authentic, in, in a genuine and authentic environment that is not forced. It's because people are value aligned, interest aligned. Everyone wants to build, create, whatever it is. And so because of that natural alignment, people are so easily able to connect together. Anyways, <laughs> I'm not so you are special. You are special. Um, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's how we started the community building. Uh, number one mistake, not having an, a, a, every, everyone. Before you open up a Discord, set up your community, figure out what your ideal state of community looks like and make sure you have all angles considered for, i.e. onboarding, so user journey, engagement, so what do you have going? Events, challenges, campaigns, quests, whatever it is. Retention as well. Then the last thing is unlocking advocacy, which is what we did later on when we converted to surgeons. So make sure you have those things considered. You can think of it as a funnel. You have your marketing funnel. At the very top of the marketing funnel is where your collaborations, which is something that we did too. So collaborations, um, uh, marketing, so social media marketing, uh, and then word of mouth as well. And then this drives people in. As soon as they get into the community, it's all about, okay, like activating them. So what's your conversion like from a Twitter follower to a community member that's verified or you know activated as an agent? Then what is the conversion between that and them actually become an activated member? And then what's a conversion from that to someone that is returning every week? And then what's a conversion from that to someone that's actually advocating for you now on Twitter? That's how I see the, uh, the value chain of members as they go through your project ecosystem. The most important thing is creating advocates. And to create advocates, it has to be done through value. You can't force it. Yeah, 100%. Fun fact, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh this guy anyways okay so now that we onboarded our initial community and we alpha club was well on live we started to bring in more and more members but there was actually <laughs> there was a big problem that we realized when we were bringing on more and more members and this depends on what your idea of successful community is some projects back then would I define a successful community as a community that has thousands of messages blasting every second, super hyped, hundreds of thousands of people in that Discord. That is a successful community. However, our idea of a successful community was not that. Our idea of a successful community was something that was quality, that allowed for productive discussions, and that also allowed for people to connect, trade, make money, right? But as we were onboarding more and more people, this was becoming harder and harder because one, if you onboard people too quickly, you don't do a good enough job at setting your, you know, communicating your culture, your values, expectations, et cetera, or they don't get to activate and settle into the community well, then they are uh, possibly mismatch. The quality of the community decreases. The quality of your conversation decreases. Your OG members, your committed members, your proud members, your advocates, maybe feel like things are changing too quick. The, the alpha club that was back then is no longer what it is now, and they'll fucking leave you as well. They won't hesitate. So onboarding members has to be done carefully if you look for a carefully crafted community. 
if you want a if you want a community that uh, is w- well clearly defined around a set of values, set of behaviors, interests. You need to curate it, right? Um, Chris Krypton asks, do you want to limit onboarding to a strict number of people or it doesn't matter? It depends on what the project is. For example, if you're launching a huge NFT collection, you probably need quite a big community to facilitate that sale. However, there are ways to um, curate and craft your community. Even if you're doing mass onboarding, roles and filters and quests and campaigns and user journeys can segment your community. You know, as people go deeper and deeper and deeper, maybe they become more supportive, they contribute more, they do more of these actions, they get to upgrade in their roles and then they get these separate set of uh, experiences or chat rooms or whatever to connect with the team and whatever. They feel more valued. So there's different ways to solve for that for sure. Um, not one size fits all. The way that Surgeons went, so Alpha Club at the start was <laughs> literally fucking releasing Discord invites for 30 minutes and people rushing in hundreds at a time. But how we do it now is by application. It's evolved, right? The drawback that we had back then was that the community was not curated, had a bunch of grinders in there. The drawback of doing it now though was that a lot of people feel like they put an application, doesn't get accepted, they feel undervalued and they might hold grudge against surgeon. So it's hard optimizing for everyone. But we try our best. And we're always open to change and improvement. So yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Ella MVP. She is. Okay. So, anyways, let me move on to the next step, which is once we started to get the oils and the gears moving for the community and things were starting to settle in we got into this natural rhythm where we were doing weekly events we got alpha callers in we were trading we were collaborating whatever but because we got into this natural rhythm we were getting very comfortable complacent and growth stunted and we were just in this autonomous mood week on week on week Whilst this was happening, the market was rapidly changing. NFT market was fucking crashing. Um, Sentiment was decreasing rapidly. People were feeling sad, upset, angry, losing money, complaining everyone and everything, blaming it on the market, blaming it on people. It's becoming hard. And so once things got deeper and darker for the space and the community. We then realized that this method of operation that we were in was quite self-limiting and that we were missing out on an opportunity to pivot because people were leaving our community as well because it wasn't too profitable for people to trade much anymore. I mean, people were used to making thousands a week and now they're making hundreds. If not, they're losing money. So. Then looking at the market as well, we saw all of these alpha passes minting and absolutely crippling. And our initial idea was to launch an alpha pass, by the way. And I'm glad that we didn't. <laughs> Come on, Reese. Come on. <laughs> and, and then, uh, so that was our initial plan, right? And we saw all these other alpha groups minting their alpha passes as well. Oh, and they were failing and fucking the market up. And then sentiment about alpha passes was crippled again. It's like, oh shit, okay, well, this, this ain't it. Like, the community doesn't want to trade that much. Alpha passes out there that are minting are failing. What does this call for? This is probably one of the most favorite times for a lot of founders, which is pivoting. All right, you probably have to pivot to survive. Pivot to meet your, like, your, your community needs, your user needs, your customer needs, whatever you want to call them. So one of the things that we did, myself and Estine, was we released a form and we started to connect with community members to figure out, okay, like, what are people's needs now? What do people actually care about? What do they want? Back then, midway last year, there were a few people working in Web3. However, for those people that don't remember, working in Web3 back then was super gated. Uh, jobs, careers, opportunities, mostly circulating between this clique of influencers, creators, whatever. But then 
everyone else who wanted to make a career in Web3 in this gig style economy that we have found it too hard to break in. A lot of people had skills, but no one knew how to utilize them in Web3. Uh, a lot of people were hustlers, had an attitude, were ready to build, but didn't have the opportunity to prove themselves or build. So then we pivoted Surgeons to become a, what was initially a builder's hub because we didn't have that B2B set up yet. So what we focused on was, okay, like let, let, let's, let's niche down into the thing that people find valuable, which are these events, these programs, these training, the network, uh, the, the, the job support. We didn't have careers yet. We didn't have uh, clients yet. So let's just focus on that and see where we go. We didn't even think about the B2B yet, to be honest. So we pivoted. We wrapped our brand. Uh, we rebranded. So fresh new look, Surgeons, thanks to ZooKit. And then we focused heavily on the key utilities of uh, weekly programs, uh, so education and training, uh, networking as well. So we started to take a more careful approach to curating our network and bringing in all these founders and builders that we've met on the way uh, and then seeing where that took us. Once we did that, we had a lot of people that were um, – both maybe unhappy. They were like, oh, you know, this is, I'm not really interested in becoming a professional Web3. That's the cost that you have to manage. You can try and convert them, but it's inevitable that when change comes, you have to manage change effectively. However, conversely, it was an open market that not many people were working in. So a lot of people were interested in it as well. It was something that was, uh, we were serving an underserved need of the market, professional training, education, like quality networks, like not that kind of shit where people bring in like thousands of people and say, hey, this is a quality networking hub, network each other, but like carefully curated quality network where we're kicking people out that don't fit our values, <laughs> uh, that, you know, are actually here to collaborate, put their ear aside, you know, support each other, whatever, like that kind of network, right? And where we're also able to use a brand to pull in amazing you know, giga brains and giga founders out there to also support us too. So, we had uh, a lot of people happy with that change too. A lot of people were attending events, like event attendance doubled. Then we had uh, discussions clearly steering towards the professional side of Web3. Furthermore, we had this network that was clearly forming around a set of values of professionalism, collaboration, co-building, co-creation. Uh, sharing. So then we knew that we were on the right track. However, that business sustainability side was not clear there yet. Um, now, <laughs> it's interesting because I then met up with a couple of founders and, and uh, Reese, Reese knows uh, who I'm talking about probably. Uh, I met up with one of them and I asked him, you know, what, what would be the one thing that you would change if you were to relaunch your NFT collection again? Uh, he said, I wouldn't launch one. Simple as that. It's too stressful, too much pain. I just look to find alternative uh, means of revenue or subscription. I'm sure, I'm sure Reese knows uh, roughly who I'm talking about, but you can't say who it is. You can't say who it is. <laughs> uh, anyways, so then, so then I was thinking, well, you know, I, I, I genuinely from the bottom of the heart, and everyone knows this in the community. Surgeons, if you're, if you're waiting for an NFT collection, you're going to be waiting 50 years. You'll be dead by the time it comes out because it might never come out. It might never happen. It might happen. It might never happen. It probably won't happen. <laughs> I love saying that, but we, we, we wanted to find, uh, find out ways to make this a sustainable business, a sustainable company where we could continue to run the community and the valuable operations that we have here without raising capital from the community. Um, so how can we do it? How can we look to set up sustainable income streams elsewhere? Um, yeah, so that, then after the development of the training programs, like the events, the sessions, the brand as well, what, what happened was that there was this natural creation of advocates of the Surgeon's brand. People were really proud of representing the Surgeon's brand. We're talking about it on Twitter. Uh, we're spreading it through word of mouth. Now, if you unlock that 
power of advocacy, which takes time, it takes effort, it takes consistency and hard work. If you're able to unlock the power of advocacy, word of mouth, then the world uh, is full of opportunities for you. Because this is how we got our first B2B client. And this is the 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 this is where the thought of us becoming a B two B two C business model came to life as well. We thought about it, it validated that a little bit, and we said, "Fuck it, like let's dive deeper into this and see if we can make it work." Because when we caught up with a B two B client, uh, the client mentioned that they heard about us from their network, uh, one of the members in the community which isn't in the community anymore i'm sure uh, i'm sure some of you know uh Eamon. i mean he might be around who knows but Eamon, um <laughs> mctasha knows Eamon. uh Eamon, uh was you know spreading the word of mouth over the <laughs> surgeons to his network and you know so one of the <laughs> Uh, and then Eamon um, was telling his network about surgeons, blah, 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 blah. Then the client was interested to catch up with us and then we started working together. Then we actually hired five people from surgeons onto that project and those jobs lasted for at least six months, I think. It was Zeno, it was Baggy, it was a few other people. I can't remember who it was. Then, <laughs> and then after that, we said, okay, well, We've got this cool dynamic here where people are like training and developing and uh, networking and increasing the uh, value they bring to the table for uh, the space to, to work on a project. And when they do that, we also have this brand that is being created where companies look to it and see it as a, a source of professionals or a trusted body to work with. So then check mark. Always make sure to milestone or check mark these key victories or key points of pivots in your journey. So you can see how your idea continues to evolve because then it's like a course of direction. As you, as you look at a plane that might be taking tiny pivots around the world, you get a greater idea of where it's landing towards, right? So with us, um, you know, as, as we started to take notes of these pivots, of these realizations, these uh, small wins, the end goal or the vision that Surgeons was on route of was becoming more and more clear. Because as you speak with most of the founders, when they put an idea or project out, the vision will change most likely. What they set out to be will not be what they will continue to work on in the next year. Their vision will change. And that's a process of... Uh, who who here has read Eric Rye's book, The Lean Startup? Like, say yes if you have. Say no if you haven't. No, you haven't. Fuck me, guys. Hey, I listened to the uh, summary. Does that count? Oh my god, no, that doesn't count. You got to read the actual book. Let me. If there's one book that I, uh, if if there's one book that I recommend anyone read. And if you're at the start of your entrepreneurship journey, for those that have like worked in startups for a few years, you'll know a lot of the concepts that he talks about. So it's up to you if you want to read it or not. But if you're at the start of your entrepreneurship journey, if you haven't worked at a startup or if you have just started working at a startup, you still want to learn a lot more, get this fucking book. I'll send it to you. Get it on Amazon, get it on whatever. Someone find a free copy and send it around. Someone find a free copy ASAP and send it around because this book, The Lean Startup, is like fucking 10 out of 10. So in The Lean Startup, they talk about this loop. It's called the build, measure, learn loop. It's what everyone should be familiar with if you're looking to build something. His thesis is that traditional companies take so long to push products out to market and then when the product hits the market, there's so much wasted resources, energy, effort, cost sunk because they weren't taking enough consultation feedback from the uh, users. And because of that, they were building a set of features for a user that didn't align at all and they wasted so much fucking time. However, the build, measure, learn oh. loop talks about this agile approach to... Uh, oh, what the fuck? User was quick. <laughs> Everyone read that. Wait, are, are you going to fucking... Are you going to fucking... Run out of Everyone get that book and read it, bro. Read it, bro. Okay. So what he talks about is this build, measure, learn loop. What you do is you pretty much, you have an idea. Oh, well, you have this target audience and this problem that you're trying to solve. 
And what Eric says is you need to get your ideas validated quickly and get feedback back ASAP. Don't waste time. Don't waste money building and trying to perfect things. Just get your bare bones out there, get feedback and iterate. It's called the build, measure, learn loop. It's something that Reese uh, was pushing me to do more and more and more over time because I was taking so slow with some things. Reese was like, fucking hurry up and just do it. I completely agree. Um, I still don't have it nailed down, but the build, measure, learn loop is so important. Market validation is key, 100%. And market validation and, uh, and doing market validation as quick as possible. That's the goal. You want to set up a build, measure, learn loop that happens as quick as possible. So you can validate your idea, get meaningful feedback and curate your product for your users as quick as possible, right? For example, if you were to launch a, uh, like a friend, friend tech collab land bot, right? So, um, you know, friend tech came out, there's this problem that we were talking about before me and Bijal at the start of this VC event, we were talking about like opportunities around friend tech, uh, friend tech is unsustainable. You know, there's, there's like this only chat room where you can deliver value. But imagine if you could integrate Frentech keys contracts into other platforms like Telegram, Discord, and manage your community there and therefore be able to have more flexibility in the value you deliver because Discord is a great platform for that. Well, what we're doing right now is, you know, me and the dev, we're building the first iteration of um, this collab land Frentech style bot. And we're getting this bare bones out in three days. And then we're just going to push it to a couple of people and get feedback ASAP. We, we're not going to strive for perfection. Perfection doesn't fucking care. It doesn't matter. Perfection can come in due time. It will never come. You'll always be working for perfection. But we want to validate our market quickly because we don't want to waste time and effort. So what if we get a bare bones product out there, put it in the hands of five or so creators, see what feedback they have. If they use it, if they use it, what are they going to use it for? current feature set, what would they like? What did they not like? What would they change? And then analyze that data and then make further improvements to it, right? That's what build, measure, learn is. You build, you push it out to the, your target users and you measure the feedback. Then you learn from that and then you do it again. And you do it again and again and again and again and again. You strive for perfection through iteration. That's the, that's the idea that Eric Rise puts out in that book, The Lean Startup. Huh. Bearish on surgeons every day. Um, fuck you, man. Um, <laughs> How do I raise my hand? Is there a way to raise my hand? To... Oh, yeah, you can talk, man. Come on, let's go. Who's, who's, who's speaking? Is, oh, is that me? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, dude. Dude, I miss you, man. Fuck. Oh, I miss you, man. Yo, oh, I feel like this Yo. is a very serious talk right now. Everybody is like getting so much value from you as always. Uh, <laughs> Then we will catch yeah, up soon. Go, go, a couple yeah, of things. Steam, 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 uh, steam uh, Mr. Rudy, Ni Hao. Ni Hao. Yeah, oh, man, I miss you, man. One day, man, yeah. I'll be back one day. Hey, you, we got spaces on Thursday if you want to come, man. Always th Thursday, yeah. Wait, always. You, you, have a, you, you have a space tonight, don't you, at 11 p.m.? To Tomorrow, tomorrow. We start oh, tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay, I'll, I'll yeah. Be, on the, be, yeah, I just want to drop by and say hi because uh, I have a buddy. What is a buddy program that Mia set up. Thanks, Mia. You're, you're amazing. <laughs> you don't want the buddy program. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you, buddy. You are my buddy. Nice. Wait. I, I, Tony yeah. Stark? Uh, I'm your buddy? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's uh, fine. We'll, we'll connect. We'll connect. Yeah. Nice. Mia yeah, connects more us. Rudy, Let's please go. give me more friends. I like my corner. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. I love you. I'll kiss you. All right. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow, man. I'll join the spaces and uh, yeah. Sorry to bother everybody. In the uh... I appreciate you, man. Stuck me. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, okay. Bye, Rudy. Take care. I'm all here, good, brother. All good. All right. Hey, hey. Just a quick intermission. Now that uh, you know me, set up a good, good energy, good break, refreshing. If you can take a screenshot of um of the event and share it on Twitter and. If you, if you want, you don't have to, but if you want, make sure to tag Surgeons Fam and Surgeons IO. Uh, You're going to do that. going to do that for sure, buddy. Yeah, it's good. To, yeah. I appreciate you, man. And, and maybe, you know, yeah. share share a few things about what you've learned. Share a few things about what you've learned. But yeah, that, that build, measure, learn loop is 100% what, 
what you need to do because if you don't do that and you strive for perfection without feedback and you work on an idea or product for three months, like imagine if you work on something for three or six months and you launch it and it's a fucking failure. Imagine if you could have just launched a, a bare bones version of that one week and you got meaningful feedback and changed the course of your building completely for better results. That's the importance of build, measure, learn because uh, you can you can create a set of assumptions yourself and you, you can feel like you know you're building the right idea for the right solution. But if you're not, one, getting feedback, if you're not, two, building something tangibly and then getting people to actually use it and give you feedback – um, and then three learning and then iterating on that, then <clears throat> you're like destined for failure in most cases. That's, um, that's what we used to do early on. Um, but then we, we understood that the, the, in entrepreneurship and building, it's all about getting feedback from your users and then making adjustments and changes to serve their needs better. Uh, but sometimes also your users don't know what the solution is. There's no point asking them what the solution is. Otherwise, they would have built it for themselves, right? So you have to make a set of assumptions and then validate that, uh, validate it through that. Uh, for example, uh, maybe Abdel doesn't really know that, um, let, let's say Abdel really wants to, like he wants to trade better. He wants to trade better. Okay? This, is, this is like early days trading. And Abdel is just always losing in the market. You know, people have got better IP internet than him. He can't change that. That's, that's, that's a given. He can't change that. But Abdel himself personally wouldn't have known that botting is something possible. If I asked him back then, hey, Abdel, what would a solution be for that? He'll probably say, oh, if you can get me better Wi-Fi, if you can move me out of Egypt, uh, I'll probably be able to mint quicker, trade quicker. But, but let's say that's off the cards, right? Let's say like, he has to deal with a bad Wi-Fi. <laughs> He wouldn't have known that, you know, botting solutions was something that would be possible back then, maybe. You know, maybe he wasn't aware of that. Maybe it wasn't a solution that was widely known. However, maybe as a builder, you have an assumption. Well, typically, you're striving for a user outcome. And for Abdul, the user outcome is to be able to mint something quickly, beat the market. Then it's up to you to devise a solution for them, not the user. So you got to think creatively about how you devise a solution for them, right? Oh, maybe I could give him a node that is quicker. Um, that, that might work. Maybe I can build a quick node or maybe I can build a trading bot or a trading bot that he can configure on a server and would launch irrespective of his Wi-Fi. Maybe that's it. So <clears throat> that's the importance of, uh, and, and, then, and then you build it and then you, you give it to him, like just a bare bones version. You even give him a mock-up and you say, hey, like, like look at this pencil drawing that I've made. <laughs> this is this is what I plan on building. If you had this, do you think this would be useful for you? How would you use it? Blah blah blah. You know, you know, you get feedback and validation, and he's excited for it. Okay, then you actually build a version one, limited features, get him to use it yeah, on the right track. Is it missing something? You like something in particular? Okay, then you keep on going down. Um, there was a question that someone asked. Just then, I think, yeah, Meve, Meve raised a good point just then, um, which was the ride or die as well. And I know earlier in the conversation too, someone asked about um, community building, creating a sustainable community building. And the model that I was referring to was that most communities in the space, they tend to go for this one-to-many approach where they seek uh, an ideal community is one where the entire community just listens to the founder and the team and that's it, right? They look up to them. There's no real two-way engagement or multi, you know, like, like inter-community engagement and interactions is not facilitated or supported. Uh, that was a huge gap that we saw. And when you don't have that happening, when you don't have community members building relationships together inside of your hub, it signifies like significant problems. Either that you know, the design of your community platform doesn't encourage or facilitate that, uh, two is that the values and the interests of community members are misaligned. And so that doesn't naturally happen and it goes on. So for us, I mean, the beautiful thing about Surgence was that our key focus when onboarding members is value and interest alignment. Like, you know, look at all the builders. You, know. you would say that builders mostly have this cool character about them of being you know, selfless, being 
interested in supporting each other, sharing collectively, learning and building. And when that was really coming to fruition, obviously you'll have bad apples here and there. It's just up to you to manage that, remove that or deal with that. But as that comes to fruition and people are feeling that and seeing that, people are naturally engaging with each other. Then when we saw that happening, we thought about, especially because what happens, right, is we saw, saw a success story. Uh, two people early on came together insurgents and built their own project. You know, and like a group of five people came together insurgents and built their own company, started their own product, blah, 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 blah. Someone insurgents hired their team from surgeons, you know? When we saw that naturally happening, we thought, wow, this is like such a great value driver for being a member of Surgeons, which is that people are so aligned with each other that they're getting involved intimately in co-creating together. It's almost like a DAO, but not. It's, it's cool. Like people are going off and building their own ideas. How do we accelerate that? Like it was happening every now and then, but how do we just make that happen every fucking day? Aha. Uh -huh. So then we came up with the ride or die idea. We came up with VC culture. We came up with Twitter spaces. We came up with all these things where we thought, okay, these, this will be a cool avenue to get our community members talking to each other, you know, engaging with each other um, and accelerate that ability for everyone to become interconnected. Uh, I had a term from it. I remember Esteem fell in love with it. He started using it every single day for the next 10 weeks. Um, it's called uh, multi-threaded relationships. If anyone does sales, um, in sales, <clears throat> they have this term called multi-threading, which is uh, when you're selling to like a big company, when there's a lot of decision makers or people that influence decision making, uh, you need to like thread these people together so that they're all talking about you in a positive manner and you understand each of their needs, uh, reservations, et cetera. But then for me, like how I see multi-threading community is that, you know, you've got all these beautiful people here. How do we take the focus from team to community relationships, detach that and make the community self-running because everyone here actually adds value to each other? Then in order to unlock value from each other, though, you need to become connected and you need to somewhat know each other and feel comfortable together. We accelerate that. Let's do this ride or die program. Let's run these initiatives that require people to collaborate and workshop together. After we did the ride or die program and that started, whew, the multi-threadedness of our community just accelerated and we're really proud of that. So that's uh, whoever asked that question, that's the answer there. That's the answer there. Then you have a many-to-many -many style community and not a one-to-many where it's just like a founder to a community and they're on a pedestal. Uh, like we, we see it as a flat structure here and everyone's on the same level. Yeah, yeah. It's all about the value you bring to the game. Follow the train, keep yourself up to date, and so it continues hundred percent. I think I think that's a really common journey. Is like people people come into surgeons. They might already be skilled and they're already well paid and in jobs, so it doesn't count for them. But you go through a period of self-discovery where you figure out what your interests and roles to work in are then after that you then niche down into something that you're really interested in so you've seen this happen time and time again and then after that uh naturally what might happen is you might get your first uh unpaid experience with someone else in the community or outside of the community because there's always an emphasis on branding, consecration, networking to get yourself heard out there. Then after that, you will naturally become more capable in that role. People will know you for the amazing work and value that you bring. Word of mouth is always crafted from that. And then you might land your first paid gig from there. And if not, you become well known, at least in the surgeon's hub, there's so many employers and people at the top of that chain and the surgeons hub that will hire you directly. And it's happened multiple times where I catch up with someone like maybe like dimming or something and they're like, Oh yeah, I hired three people from the surgeons community this week. I hope you don't mind. I'm like, oh, that's all good brother. Like do what you want. <laughs> so yeah, like there's, there's, uh, 
That's and that and and you, you don't get these opportunities from grinding. You don't get these opportunities from being a dickhead. You don't get these opportunities from sitting around. You got to put in the work and um, be known. At least the bare minimum value that you can get is being put into a fucking amazing network that can amplify your growth, anyways, as well. For example, I get ops from being yeah yeah, but B J, you you built different, man. You build different. You're like chief chief. Dickhead officer, CDO, you're at the top, brother. <laughs> what was this? I just created a good chat with Gohan, just so you know. Uh, I can't search things. But yeah, um, just before that, anyone has any questions so far? Anyone has any questions so far? Okay, cool. So then when we realized that there was that NFT history of surgeons. Who is me? The new mark is by that. Thank you. So then what happened is after the first client came in, uh, we created the operations around the B2B. So Steam took that on. Reese was very close to that as well. I shared a lot of advice and alpha on that too. And we started to scale uh, one thing, so outreach, sales outreach and connecting with people. Uh, two, delivering success to clients. So we got referrals as well. And three, branding and marketing campaigns to drive. Because uh, because the brand eff effectively took a pivot or took an upgrade, right? And so we need to make sure that if we're doing this operationally, uh, then public facing side, the, the people need to know about that as well. Like Surgeons is not just this professional development hub. Now it's a place that clients can come to to accelerate growth. Okay, so we need to craft a marketing campaign around that and get loud about that as well. So, uh, so then, yeah, so so we did that too, and we started to get more and more opportunities from outreach. If you guys are starting some sort of services company out there, by the way, when you're getting started, if you don't have a network already from working around, just like myself and Steve, like we never worked in Web three until that fucking first company, believe it or not. But, anyways. If you don't have that network of like referrals or partners or clients or whatever, then you're going to have to start off by outreach. And outreach is a gruesome process, especially in Web3 when it's not quite clear how to outreach. Because in LinkedIn, it's like Web2 industries, it's really fucking clear. Like you send connections, send message outreaches, emails, and people, if you do right, uh, people will reply. Um, but in Web3, like Twitter inboxes are spammed. Uh, it's hard to connect with people if you're small, et cetera, et cetera. So it was a fucking hustle. But um, when you start your services company in the first stage, you're going to be depending a lot on outreach for deal flow. But as you start to get your first cohort of clients and you actually do good work, the founders will bring in three additional potential clients for you. That's just how it works with referrals. Um, so then our emphasis was on getting deal flow and then doing really good work. Um, and inevitably, when we, when we started, the, the quality of the work was shaky. I uh, was still learning so much. The team was learning so much. But as we evolved, continued to work um, and, and do better better work, we learned so much and we got more referrals and things grew and grew. And then that's when we started to become what we are now, which is that uh, Web3 Accelerator with a collective of builders and founders and investors here in the, in the surgeons community. Uh, and like it effectively a B2B to C model as well, where deal flow is able to realize into job opportunities, able to realize into jobs for you. So yeah. Oh fuck. I've been talking for an hour. Jesus. Uh, anyone have any questions? Anyone have any questions? Otherwise, um, if you have a particular topic you want me to dive into further in like a next session, if you're particularly interested in like, oh, like I've got an idea, how do I market it? Or I've got an idea, how do I build a community? Around it? I've got an idea, how do I build partnerships around it, right? And like get it integrated into ecosystems. Yeah, definitely, definitely let me know. That's a fire emoji, Reese. I think uh, I don't get it. I'm still a bit of a DAW. Let me see. I did have a question. Did you find your sweet spot the moment you're truly proud of all the hard work you put in surgery? Oh, Chris, that's a fucking good question. Let me read it out for everyone that can't hear it. Did you find your sweet spot the moment that you're truly proud of all the hard work you put in surgeons or you think it's all about to happen in the new future? 
Uh, Chris, I think the thing is about being a founder, I think a lot of people resonate with it is that <laughs> you'll find yourself in this never ending pursuit of happiness, my friend. Like you're just continually, continually fighting for better and better. And sometimes, and this is a really important thing. And this is something that esteem reminds me to do. I remind esteem to do. I remind other people to do. I remind myself to do is just to take a moment to appreciate the journey and the um, achievements that you made to date. Because if you never do that, you always feel like, uh, yeah, exactly. Being power, you never get to the state of euphoria. It's, it's always, always going up. Always, always struggling to go better and better. Yeah. So if you ask me how I'm feeling now, I feel fucking underwhelmed, man. I just need to continue fucking working hard, hustling away. I don't know what the fuck is happening. <laughs> I'm trying my best. See what's up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've been talking to myself for the past one hour, Mike. <laughs> Overqualified. Um, what else? Like, is no one else allowed to talk, or no? no, no everyone can talk and share share their stories and stuff like that. Hundred percent, Mike. Man, go. Yeah. Okay, I just got home. You, you're gonna need to update me. So, I'm talking about like, well, this week the theme is entrepreneurship and just starting ideas and building. So, Mike, have you have you got any nuggets for that? About nuggets. building, entrepreneurship, building. Uh, you you had a fair go on your web. Yeah, I would just you know set out so that even if you think you're gonna fail, just go and do it regardless. Like, because the worst mm. thing that it can happen is you fail, and I mean, try and not fail get yourself into too much. Right? Well, like, try and not get yourself into too much debt. That's the main thing. Mm. But yeah. I would uh, encourage oh, people to. Yeah, hundred percent, man. You sound just like the author. Of Am I tripping? Oh, did you rug? Uh, I think I did rug, but I think I should be back. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you sound just like the author of the book that I was talking about just then. Oh, yeah, no. I don't know what book that was. I wasn't here. The Lean Startup. Um, but, yeah, I mean, fail yeah. fast, right? That's um, one thing. It, it, like, don't be scared of failure because if you fail, you'll learn and you can pivot or change and whatever. You save your time and resources as well. Like, like, yeah, hundred percent. Okay, what? I don't get it. There's so many people in here. Why is no one else talking? People are too scared. Like, I see like, brain scan like, here, Cosy. Are we meant to ask you questions? Yeah, is that is that the uh, idea? I mean, people are just people have just been asking questions in the VC. I, I was just talking about the journey of surgeons and how it's been built. We are listening, motherfucker. <laughs> Oh yeah, shit in the chat. Wait, but the, the best, nah, the best. Nah, nah. But, I, but but this is this is the end. Like everyone share, everyone share. Bro, the, the best part about the journey is the friends we made along the way. Oh, you cute cunt. Honestly, true. <laughs> like don't. But it's, it's fucking. It's true. Korean barbecue soon. I, if there's one thing that is super valuable, like the number one thing that is valuable to the journey building surgeons, it's not surgeons itself, the company, the entity. It's not the the money, the clients, whatever. It's it's the fucking friends, right? It's a new <laughs> network, the friends that you have across the world. Oh yes, yeah. that's, that's like I wouldn't try that for anything else. If I had to lose one thing, if I had to lose like surgeons or the network, the community, the people that I build, I delete surgeons community. I'll just rebuild it, rebuild it, spend time with everyone again. I don't know, yeah. community, people, network. That's uh, treasure that, treasure that. It's global. It's valuable. It's fun. How, how good is like connecting with people Then you travel to a different country or city and then you just have like friends there because of Web3. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm going to chime in here on this one. Sort of the net, yeah, the network effect that this sort of gives you, you have exposure and resources in countries all over the world, even where you may not think, just because of the exposure that this community can give you and sort of, the, some of the reach that people have here um 
Do you have pretty much anything at your disposal? You just have to reach out and ask questions. Yeah, I'm Emma. Serious, yeah. I can talk to someone in every country and go for Korean barbecue. Yeah, you can. 100%. Like, you go over to an international country and someone's going to host you. Like, that, that is just overpowered. Like, the fact that someone can host you elsewhere, take you around at dinner, nights out, party, meet friends, network, whatever, like, that's crazy. If I went to Singapore and Korea and I was in Web3, I'd just be a fucking boring-ass solo trip, meet with a couple people and family. It's fine. It's fine. But... Like going after Web3 and like there's an entire fucking network there for you to explore. And and the beautiful thing as well is that doesn't need to be your network. Like most of the people that I met and everyone here can do this in this VC. You can just ask one person next to you. You can ask me, Reese, Drake, anyone and say, hey, I'm going to Toronto, Canada next year. Do you know anyone that I could meet up with there? Oh, yeah, yeah. I meet up with this person, that person, X, Y, Z. That's a beautiful thing about Web3. You know, people are going to put you in touch with other beautiful people to catch up with and chat and spend time with. Hey, what's in? Hey, hey, my man. How you doing? I'm good, Magnus, man. It's, it's been a while since I've heard your voice. It's yeah, been like same. A, a week or two. <laughs> yeah, you've been traveling around the world. You forgot us here. Oh, no, no, man. I've been fucking craving coming back home and getting back in the group especially like traveling around the world especially like for conferences it just burns you out as well burnout is real yeah uh i've got a question regarding uh, what you've been talking about mm. so um regarding the journey as a founder obviously there's a saying that it goes like this to go i think i'm not 100 percent sure but to go um far you go alone but to go further you need to go together like with friends and people who have the same mindset as you so my question is how did you like select the team you are with now because without the team definitely you would have had hiccups and lots of setbacks but the way to help make things move forward you know what i'm saying 100%. like how are you to select the team 100 percent. this is not me at all this is like the collective effort of the team and the community it's like important to recognize that uh, when you have a solid team um, and, and like the thing is, is like uh, the team leads me more than I lead the team often. Sometimes <laughs> it'd be like that. It's, it's fun uh, when it'd be like that too. And you recognize team members strengths and you listen to them and you empower them. It's uh it's amazing. Like for example, who's here? like McTasha, oh, her growth has been insane. Like she is a hundred X me and, fucking collaborations, partnerships, outreach, and everything. It's crazy how she's a cream of the crop top. But she started from zero. I mean, she, she's, she has a very humbling um, start to her journey, which is, you know, being a community uh, member, hearing about this collaboration manager role and wanting to take a shot at it, and then all the way to you know, top of the ranks, amazing collaboration manager now. <laughs> and um, who else is here? See, fuck, there's too many billions. I can't see, but I'm sure, like, you know, a lot of people here have had that same sort of journey. Same sort of journey. It's a beautiful thing, thing about Web3, which is you can go from zero to 100. Um, it all just comes down to whether you've got it or not inside of you. That fucking grit, the attitude, the character, the ability to build rapport and connect with people deeply. That's important. The yeah, reason really, that, like, I, Reese, Reese and myself, for instance, like when me and Reese caught up the first couple of times, we, we connected pretty fucking well. It's like, I don't even know how we fucking got connected, Reese, but shit, it's been a long time, man. And then after getting connected for the first time, when we met in Melbourne together, that was like crazy. Amazing time seeing someone that you've been working closely with in real life. I don't know. Yeah, that's been. I don't think we met at the no 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 but like that's when we met IRL but like before before Melbourne like how did we know each other? Hey Ruthie, I, I have a question. I have a little question for you. 
Yes, yes. Ask away. Ask away. Uh, okay, okay. No, it's it's your it's uh, it's kind of like a personal thing, but uh, it's like, okay. is are you doing Web three full time or you have some other side gig or other thing as well? Um, I'm doing Web three twenty four seven, twenty four five. Yeah, five days a week. Okay, Saturday Sunday off. Yeah, I try to. Yeah, that's cool. A little <laughs> brain refreshment. <laughs> Yeah, That's I don't what know. the one thing that I realized about uh, Web3 is that even though it's a fast moving market, you shouldn't stress yourself about the pace of it. Um, pace yeah. yourself. Like I used to do seven days a week. Then over time, I realized that ain't it. Um, it doesn't, doesn't actually realize into anything valuable. And then I cut down to five days a week and try to maintain a healthy balance. The only thing is, as long as, long as you're consistent, as long as you're consistent, it's something that I've been striving for. Um, and, and Strack has been helping out a lot as well, helping me out on that front. But consistency is key and understanding what your limits are. Uh, there's two key things, especially if you're going to become an entrepreneur with your limits. The first one is the amount of time that you can spend on meetings and calls without burning out. Too many calls and meetings will burn you out. It's facts. It's the quickest way to burn you out. Two ways. Because one, uh, it drains your battery talking to people all the time. Uh, but two... It also gets you in this dark mindset of fuck, you know, so many calls. And at the end of the week, you're like, it feels like I didn't achieve anything. So you need to balance that carefully. You need to make sure you have enough flow state, you know, periods of work where you can actually get meaningful work done. But then you have calls set up as well. But balance that too. Balance those two. It's a balancing act. Ruthie King, Strack yeah. is king. You're the, you're the king, Strack. By the way, I I have I had some a, a little talk with Shrek. He is he is a great guy, in my opinion. Like Shrek King, Shrek is the king, hundred percent. Great down to earth person, man. Yeah, he's like a great like he's so humble and he's like wonderful man. Hey guys, go follow Shrek. He's wonderful. 100%. Nah, follow Yusuf, bro. <laughs> yeah. Fuck up, Yusuf. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he's oh posting his own tweet look at him look at him <laughs> the funniest thing about uh kbw on a token 20.9 i was seeing uh seeing what was his name Fuck, what's his name vitalik a uh, vitalik rock up to an event vitalik. security yeah vitalik rocking up to an event with security guards around him yeah, like 10 bodyguards around him i was like what the fuck yeah yeah he, he turned up to an event he was speaking at an event yeah, so Giga Brain, I didn't understand anything you were saying. By the way, um, everyone, like, if there's a few things that I would urge people to learn about right now, it's CK EVMs. It's a huge trend right now, um, and what that means. So, especially NFT or slash Web three gaming projects, and also DeFi as well. Um, but yeah, definitely learn. No Z Z ZK, not CK ZK EVMs. Zero knowledge. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, and more so just that EVM part, anyways. Um, yeah, learn about that uh, if you want to stay on top of the industry because that's a huge theme right now. Um, it's all about uh, scalability and interoperability. Yeah, it does, it, you know, it's a few benefits, but still, yeah, two hundred. Yeah, exactly. It's more for like the like, like user onboarding and flow between chains and in, in if it already Web three users, but. Like outside of that, Web two, it's, it's yeah, yeah oh, immutable X polygon partially in the way for gaming, hundred percent. Yeah, that they had so many events talking about immutable polygon partnership at KBW and fucking token three point nine. Caleb was insane. I'm I'm catching. Hey, hey, hey. Lona, you legend. Ah, uh, okay, so. Sometimes people do everything. They do the research. They do the background check. Everything uh, yeah. they put on a paper. But when it comes to execution, they fail. <clears throat> yeah. So why is that? Okay. Um, so like you haven't, uh, just to clarify, you have an idea. You're doing everything planning related. You're doing the marketing plan, community plan, product plan, all these different plans, and then you execute and it fails, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say it goes back to the thing that I was talking about before, which was 
Um, you, you're building something within a set of assumptions. Um, when you start out building something, you're trying to validate a set of assumptions you have. Uh, that's like effectively what building is, right? Like I, I set out surgeons with a set of assumptions that people, uh, like professional development was something that was underserved in the market and people would be interested in it. Or well, people were interested in careers in Web3 and like, that was a big leap of faith of a, a assumption, right? That's what my product or my thing was going to be focused on. So you have this assumption and your goal is to validate that quickly. So I, if you spend months like preparing those plans, launch, and it fails, well, you didn't validate any of that probably. You didn't take the feedback in and pivot. I mean, we see that happen again and again with NFT projects. It gets so stuck in the idea that once you're out of the market, you can't change. And a lot of the NFT project founders go out of the market and they don't validate anything. They don't take community feedback. They don't get to know their community. They don't create a council to listen from and, and make arrangements and plans and changes about their strategy, right, to achieve greater success in the long run. Um, they don't onboard like, quality advisors or just a council to run back and soundboard off. So I would say the, the reason that you fail the execution is because uh, either the problem that you were solving for really isn't a problem or the solution that you're providing for the problem is a not good solution or maybe the problem is there and the solution is there but your marketing plan, branding, messaging, everything about the go-to-market was flawed. So is it the problem? Is it the solution or is it the distribution? With the problem and the solution, you can solve for that with market feedback and surveys, right? Interviewing people. With the go-to-market, fuck man, like that's, that's going to be about down to like yourself, your network, your ability to network with some cool guys, girls that can help craft a great plan for you to take this to market, right? Because Help, some yeah. people can build an amazing product, but if they don't have the know-how to bring that product to market, it won't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, I am co-founder of a project Not So Blue. Uh, the founder is my friend, Humble. So would like to ha have a chat with you about the project 100 percent, man any any time uh get me on telegram i'll get you on telegram okay yeah i am on telegram so it's in your bio the telegram link yeah my telegram is the same as my discord and yeah, same as okay my i'm actually doxed to my telegram <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm trying to telegram is fucking uh, Reese finally coming over. <laughs> yeah, Reese is doxxed. I'm now doxxed. Everyone's doxxed. All right. Okay, cool. I'm I think I'm gonna wrap the session now. If anyone has any other questions, you can just drop it in the builders chat and I'll go around and answer and spend time that. But definitely got to wrap it up now and you know, get back into some good flow state work. But I appreciate everyone so much for coming. And um, oh, there's so many quality people that have been server muted. Oh, Cozzy, I didn't realize you were server muted. What the fuck? Some other people are server muted. I don't know if you guys are server muted for a good reason or a bad reason. <laughs> there you are. Hey, Cozzy. Hey, Dad Cam. Ruthie. Uh, no, Dad Cam is definitely hot marking a little bit. Antone's definitely hot market a little bit. Okay, anyways. All right, everyone, catch you later. Thank you so much for this session, gang. Um, for those people that came to the event that were maybe in the outside, go to the outsider's chat and let's chat there and see what's up. But anyways, all right, I appreciate you all, everyone. Thank you so much and speak soon. Speak soon, speak soon, speak soon. Oh, space. Oh, Joe Nee has a session in like 30 minutes. But then there's a big space on Thursday that I want everyone to come to about Web3 Gaming and Friend Tech and seeing what the fuck is Friend Tech about because I've got no idea still. Uh, okay. I appreciate, I appreciate you so much. But yeah. Uh, yeah, buddy. Yeah. I appreciate hey, your energy Tony. too, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll catch up soon, man. We've got to do our... Uh, yeah, Friday for sure, night. man. Yeah, for sure. Like, right, you, your energy is great, man. Like, 
I really like your energy. <laughs> the way you talk is amazing. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. No, no, no. Why not? Right. Like, <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Come on. Yeah, for sure. All man. love, brother. All love. Yeah, all love. Take care of yourself, buddy. I need to go now. It's time, like 321. Mm-hmm. Bye. 100%. Uh, I catch ya. Bye. Oh, pump it up. You got to pump it up. Don't you know? Pump it up.